According to the CDC, more than a third of American adults are not getting enough sleep on a regular basis, and it can have emotional, physical, and economic consequences. I recently sat down with Dr. Shamar Charles, a social epidemiologist, to ask him about strategies to try and get the rest we need and how to figure out the right amount for you. I think everyone has to do a risk-reward. Um, if you're a working mother of two, spending two more hours with your kid in the morning, that might be worth it. Right. Maybe you can cut that down to one hour. I think the real magical number is probably six hours, okay. you know? But I think that for many Americans, really the decision is coming between some superfluous activities like maybe watching Netflix sometimes I am not watching Netflix and <laughs> for I am a couple not of extra sleep. hours. Right, right. Um, but if you're looking for what I would call a middle decision, which is like going to the gym versus an extra hour of sleep, uh -huh. long term, getting that extra hour of sleep probably has a bigger health benefit. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. There have been links between like Alzheimer's much later on in your life and like sleep deprivation. But I think that there are really acute social effects. Like, for example, in the medical community, lack of sleep leads to medical errors. Or there's a phenomenon that I call slangry. You're sleep deprived <laughs> and you come into work yeah. and- I was gonna call it grouchy, witchy, maybe a few other right. things. Yeah. And you have a bad attitude, right? right? And you're irritable. And I think that that sometimes, you know, creates cracks in the work environment. So I definitely Not to mention think, the home environment. Right, like, and not to mention the home environment right. as well. Um, I think that sleep deprivation could be looked at as like uh, losing a sleep reserve, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanna have a nice sleep reserve. We wanna get our seven to eight hours so that the times naturally where we're not getting seven to eight hours, we can sort of like buoy that with our sleep reserve. But if you're on a constant deficit, if you're constantly not getting the amount of sleep that you need, you're gonna constantly be irritable. You're gonna constantly have a lack of concentration. You'll probably get sick more likely And too. you're more likely to get sick because your immune system doesn't have enough time to repair while you sleep. Okay, you mentioned Netflix as being a killer Absolutely. for people's sleep habits. What other things would you tell people not to do? I'm assuming don't read your phone in bed, but what else? Don't read your phone in bed. Try your best not to take work home. I know that that's incredibly hard. Ways that you can do that is you can actually charge your phone outside of your room. You can have like a charging station maybe in the living room. Creating an actual sleep environment, getting like blackout curtains is like a really important thing that you can do. And then trying to have a consistent time every night that you sleep. I think those are three uh, doable measures for most Americans um, that can increase their, their sleep. Is there any upside, any parts of technology that maybe help us get into so, some of these things? So there, there are. There are certain sleep apps that actually might help to regulate your sleep, but really it's increasing the quality of sleep that you have. Uh -huh. But I will say that technology and sleep is kind of an oxymoron. When you're looking at your phone in the middle of the night, there's a blue light that's emanating. And so it's actually tricking your body clock into thinking that it's daytime all the time. Mm -hmm. The reality is you gotta put the phone away so that your body knows that it's nighttime so that you can actually get not just the right amount of hours of sleep, the but good sleep, quality yeah. sleep. You gotta get a few All right, tell sleep. me the truth. How much did you sleep last night? Six hours. Hmm. But, <laughs> but, but, but my risk reward was it was worth it to be on here with you. Oh, I'll take that trade. <laughs> right. Dr. So Charles, you're clever. Absolutely. I like it. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.